Hi everyone, we are back and again for the new nurse. We're going to discuss the patient in cardiopulmonary arrest. And I just thought I would start off to let you let you know that DearNurses.org is packed with helpful information. And the first thing I wanted to talk about before I even got to that assignment is reperfusion therapy. It is a form of treatment which is used for myocardial infarction. Um, there are certainly ST segment changes that you know validates its use. And there, there are some contraindications for this therapy. Patients who generally have bleeding disorders are not suitable candidates. TPA, thrombolytic plasminogen uh, activator, is what is used to reperfuse the heart supply. And usually is extremely effective, but it's not a cure-all. Some patients are just not suitable candidates, especially if they have bleeding, dis uh, bleeding disorders. Now let's talk about the 12-lead EKG, which is a very important tool. When a patient has a myocardial infarction, an EKG is a must-have. They must have a 12-lead EKG done. There are some other cardiac workup, like lab values that are done, like cardiac markers. We have uh, CK, CPK, uh, LDH, and troponin and SGOT. There might be lots more tests depending on what the doctor feels is necessary. But the EKG is usually the best indicator of the location of the myocardial infarction. Uh, most nurses nowadays know, know how to read an EKG. It's a nurse advancement. It's not that difficult anymore. Learning specifically where myocardial infarction is and being able to locate the damage that's done to the heart and what the expectations are. If it's the anterior wall of the heart, the pumping power, the left anterior descending, the pumping power will be involved. More than likely, if the left ventricle is damaged, fluid tends to back up in the lungs, con creating conditions like congestive heart failure, cardiogenic shock. But let's go on to some of the code drugs that are used. And here we have a code team all put together. There obvi there's obviously a need for CPR. There is the defibrillator on the right hand side, the pharmacist, the crash guard, medications. And here are some of the drugs that might be used. Epinephrine, next name adrenaline, it vasoconstricts and causes a rise in blood pressure and heart rate. Atropine, this is one that's used for bradycardias, but again, it's usually used according to whether the doctor wants to use it or not, because they're different type of bradycardias and treatments, depending on what the situation is, the doctor decides what he wants to do. Then we have vasopressin, which is used 40 units, just a one-time dose is usually used um, for the patient uh, in ventricular fibrillation, it's not repeated, it's just a one dose. Then we have amiodarone, and that's an antiarrhythmic which is used in the treatment of both atrial and ventricular rhythms. Then we have lidocaine, and lidocaine, even though it's used, it's an antiarrhythmic, I believe it's not used quite as frequently as it used to in the past. 20 years ago, it was used a lot more frequently. It's, although it's still in use, I've seen it used far less than it used to be in those days. And now we come to a topic which uh, I wanted to emphasize. When a, co a code blue happens, a cardiopulmonary arrest, usually it starts off with a lot of chaos. Code is called, people just rush off to the bedside. There might be eight to ten people in a very small area. You've got respiratory, you've got somebody trying to intubate that patient, the code card, possibly uh, somebody trying to shock that patient. You have the EKGs, IV fluids, the lab, and it goes on and on. And you know, it is a very dangerous time. In fact, you have to be extremely careful that you do not wind up hanging drugs and forgetting to label them. Here is a the case, there is a code blue. Both IV bags have been hung, but there are no labels. So how do you decide which is dopamine and which is potassium? Yes, it has been known to happen. So when you have a patient in a critical situation like this, you need to keep your wits about you. And I suggest that if you give any medications, make certain that you label them. Hope you've learned something from this. Have a great day.